Hey, hey, it's Mega, aka the Art Messiah, back with another art tutorial here to save you from your art sins. I hope you guys are doing great and having a good day. Um, today, I wanted to talk about um, art compositions and how to make a good compositions and how to learn by doing and how to learn by copying, um, how to learn the Mega way. All right, let's jump right into it. Um, so. Uh, as you can see here, here's a scene that I'm working on and uh, I stopped and I thought to myself, why don't I go ahead and make a video and kind of share some of the behind the scenes process of how this looks um, so that that way if you guys are interested to see how my artwork is produced, um, you know, you can see behind the scenes, you can see exactly what steps I take um, to, to get to a finished piece. Now, what you see here is purely um, compositional. You can see it's very basic, and I would say I'm at the stage where I'm happy with the layout, and now it's going to be time to do a lot more refinement. Um, so getting into this, um, having starting off with a strong composition is very important. Um, one mistake that I used to make um, all the time when I was just beginning to draw, uh, one of the sins that I would make was that I would just go into detailing right from the start. So. Um, if I was drawing a character, you know, I would do, sometimes I would do a sketch, um, but I would start detailing that character before I started working on another character. Um, so the problem with that is that you don't get to see the big picture when you just start to go in into details. And this is extremely important, especially when you're working on background environments. Um, with characters and buildings and lighting, it's a lot to take into account. And the way our brains work, um, we can't think of everything at once. Um, so as an artist, you really need to be um, aware of what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish and figure out, break down the steps and what you need to do to get there. Um, so the comic that I'm working on, um, called Ignition, um, is entirely in grayscale for this reason because I really want to go through and make sure I have strong composition before I do any kind of color or really any major detail. Um, so what I'll be taking you guys through today is those steps that you need to take to create um, good composition. Um, now there's a few ways to kind of go about this. Um, how I learn is just by doing things so that's the approach that I'm going to take and kind of teach you guys um, about. Okay, so um, first, I'm going to talk about, okay, if I'm just going to do it, it's it's taking reference. Um, so a lot of stuff you can either do from your head or you can kind of do from reference, and I kind of do a blend of the two. But I'm telling you, for people that are starting out, it's like even when you get advanced, you're still going to want to use references, a lot of references. So as you can see over here, I have my list of references, and I'm going to go ahead and click through them and kind of explain um how I pull these references and why I pull these references, okay? So now, this scene right here, this is what I envisioned in my head. Um, I knew that I wanted the character sitting right around here, and I knew I wanted the building right in front, and it's going to be kind of like a general store, like a grocery store. And I know that I want a TV placed right here. So I quickly sketched this out. And then what I needed to do is I needed to find references to really pull out that emotion and that mood and the ideas that I was going for. So I'm going to go ahead and click through some of these references. Um, some of these were found on like ArtStation or DeviantArt or Pinterest. Um, really look anywhere for inspiration. You can even pull inspiration from your life. Like I went for a walk just yesterday, um, just to just to gather uh, inspiration and mood and lighting. And I took pictures while I was out. So I brought in this reference and I changed the the in the grayscale just so I could see the values. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of um, just a value study and so this was a rain scene and so I felt like I could learn something about when it rains what kind of things that uh, we see so um, if you go through you can see that it's um, a little bit darker when it's raining right so the entire scene has a, a darker tint to it um, and then if you kind of look through um, I notice that you can see kind of like a um, this rain effect that you see surrounding the house or on the car. So when the rain hits, it disperses, right? It creates particles. And so those particles, they create atmospheric 
uh, perspective. And so that atmosphere, uh, atmospheric perspective is basically what, what creates this cloud of mist that blocks anything behind it. So it's these particles that are blocking our view behind it. So that's why you get this like white kind of mist and fog, um, as you can see on top of these roofs and stuff. So that's what I'm kind of pulling from that reference, and I, I really like the mood for that. And then I go up to my next reference, and once again, it's another rain scene. I can see how it's dark. And what I pulled, what I'm going to pull from this is the, ref the reflection on the ground. Um, I really like how um, if it's wet, you're going to be able to see the reflection of anything that's above it. So that's one way to get that rain effect. And as you can see, you can also get that atmospheric perspective effect of that rain right on top of this building. So we're going to be thinking of those two things as I as I now begin to add the rain into my scene. So. Here's a few more references. I really like this scene. This is snow. It's not rain, but I really liked the composition, uh, the perspective, and also the lighting. So uh, this is a, a snow scene, but you can see the flow of the composition, right? It's dark, and it just surrounds the picture, and that kind of it kind of guides your eye into these focal points, into these points of light. So I wanted that same kind of dark on the outside focusing in on the points of light because the, the the light parts of the scene is what's going to be important and what's playing on the TV is going to be what's important in this particular scene that I'm creating right and so I really liked how he did these bright lights and they're and they're just pure white right so it looks like something's illuminating from inside and then it's the same thing with this this is kind of a, another rain scene that I thought was interesting and I really like this scene right here because it was um, lighting from the inside and it was dark on the outside. So you can see a lot of the detail on the inside of the store. Now imagine if it was a bright day. Um, if you were to try to look into the store, you would get reflection. You wouldn't really be able to see what's inside. So I'm going to be taking that and also just a little bit of like the details of, you know, you got street lights and things glowing and um, street signs. And, and my scene is very much like a street. So I'm going to be taking in um, some of that. Uh, inspiration as well. So now that you have your references, you can start to take those references and those inspirations and start to put it into your own work. So, um, like I said, that's why I based my composition like this because I want the dark to be around the outside edges and to really lead your eye and to guide your eye into this figure sitting right here on the side of a uh, sidewalk and it leads your eye right up into where this TV is going to be. Now I haven't detailed it um, but that's fine but we're just working on how to get this scene to work. So the very first step um, that you need to do, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of strip away some of these layers um, so we can start to see some things. Okay. So the very first thing that I typically do is I just go ahead and drop in um, a horizon line, right? And I drop in a gradient for the sky. And that's how I kind of start to begin the scene. And then I use very big shapes and blocky shapes to start to build in the background. And I build from the background up into the foreground. And honestly, you can do it whatever way you want. You can do the foreground first, midground, um, whatever suits you. But I like to start with this like midground. Um, and then from there, um, I jump into the midground, and as you see, it's 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 just one shade. It's not a whole bunch of shades. I'm not worried about the detail on these uh, background, midground, foreground. I'm just worried um, about the shapes. Are these interesting shapes to play with? So I really like the shape of this this little light post here that might be shining light down on this character, or something like that. And I really like the shape of this pole. Um, I like the shape of this building, so I'm just messing with shapes at this point in time, and that's what you should do too. Okay, we're just messing with shapes, um, and then I built the foreground shapes. Okay, so now that I have general flow and composition, then what I do is I start to just very abstractly add in some more detailed lines so that I can start to see the perspective a little bit more in the edges of different shapes. And then when I do that, then I can go in and add even more detail in for lighting and the windows and um, some partial shading. Okay, so this is where I'm at now. Now I have the general composition. Once you have this general composition, now it's time to take those references and to really 
um, start adding in some detailing and refining so that's what I am going to be doing um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in time-lapse but basically I'm gonna come back afterwards um, and explain why I made some choices um, and how I kind of went about that process and hopefully during the time lapse you can see that I'm really only sticking with just two brushes you don't need to use a lot of brushes when you're just working on composition and just getting a scene to work um, so you're gonna see that you're gonna see that whole process and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna talk about some of the decisions I made um, and yeah so we're gonna take it from there so uh, stick with me uh, through this time lapse um, I'll make it quick Okay, it's going to be like a speed painting, um, but I'll be right back with you guys. So let's go ahead and uh, kick this into go-go time, baby. And we are back from that time lapse now. I went through a lot of things really quickly. And um, so originally I had recorded something directly for this um, uh, next section. I, I recorded it live like I like to do. Um, but I have to do a little bit of a voiceover to explain some things. So um, first things first, I kind of want to explain um, how I got to this point. So I really combined all those effects that I said I would, um, including that... Um, um, atmospheric perspective by adding this kind of like cloudy um, this above um, both the roof of the houses and the building um, I went in and added the rain effects and uh, one thing that I was really happy with was this reflection um, that you can see that is b beneath the building and that really helps sell that there's water on the ground because if water um, reflects a lot of light so if you can see a reflection you kind of get this idea of wetness um, so raindrops were created pretty simply, um, just simple brush strokes. And then what I did was I created little particle effects. Um, and I went ahead and took those off. I created little particle effects down here. And um, I'm basically what you're seeing now is that um, I'm creating an animation. So there's different, all these different kind of um, rain scenes that I made. And I made three scenes and I'm going to go ahead and play through them right now. Um, so I animated the scene. Uh, but this wasn't really all that necessary for the composition, but it was something cool that I did. Um, so, as you can see, I just ran through that animation. Um, and then here in a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and show you when the animation is looped. And we get a really cool effect of a raining day. And by combining all those inspirations and references, we get to create a really cool scene. So here's the finished product. Um, it looks like it's, you know, raining pretty hard. Um, you can also see like the rain dripping down the building. Um, so this was done with um, very, I, want, I shouldn't say very little work, but I was very deliberate about how I did this. Um, like I said, it was only um, three animations, right? Um, so three scenes, three scenes that I had to draw uh, the rain for. Um, but as you can see, the effect comes out pretty nice. Um, and I'll go into a little bit greater detail about how you can do this, but... Um, you can do this within Photoshop or you can use Adobe, uh, Adobe Animate, whatever kind of suits you. Um, but yeah, this is the, the rain effect in total. And I have never done a scene like this before. So uh, basically, if you want to be able to do a scene or do something, um, I just recommend doing it. Um, and with that, I um, hope you guys have a great day. And uh, I'll be back with another video real soon.